We all know Michael, Freddy, and Jason, but who are those unsung heroes? Who are the underrated slashers of the horror genre? Let's talk about it. What's up guys, welcome to Drum Dums, welcome to another top five. And this one is gonna be cool because we're gonna talk about underrated slashers. Like I said in the intro, we're not gonna be talking about you know, the big three or the big five, if you include Leatherface and Pinhead, no. We're gonna talk about some slashers that you might not be that familiar with. Some of these selections are gonna have spoilers in them. So I would say enter at your own risk, but I will definitely give you a warning beforehand. So you can watch the video, but if it's a movie you are really curious to watch without a spoiler, don't worry, I'll give you a heads up. But my good friend, Zach versus the Blu-ray Mountain, I'll put a link to his channel below. Definitely go and check him out. And he's going to start us off with his top five. And there's going to be some honorable mentions. So anyway, take it away, Zach. Hey, guys. Like Lee said, I am Zach from Zach First on Blu-ray Mountain. And Lee, dude, I just want to thank you real quick before we get into my list. Can't believe this collab is actually happening. Before I start the list, guys, I want to throw in an honorable mention. Tom Hanninger from the 2009 version of My Bloody Valentine. Now, I'm going to be a little biased because I love Jensen Eccles and Patrick Lussier. Drive angry. You're looking at you, Cage. But I really feel like he's an underrated slasher. I believe that that killer was one of the better ones we've had in the last few years. But with that said, guys, let's just get into the list. Coming in at number five, we have Rusty Nail from Joyride. Rusty is a tough one to place for me because if you've seen Joyride, was he really in the wrong? Now, for most of us, at least I hope. We probably won't go as far as old Rusty did in this film. But I bet some of us would want revenge. Rusty uses the element of disguise and surprise. And definitely pulls inspiration from one of my favorite Spielberg films, Duel. Coming in at number four, we have Brenda Bates, the killer from Urban Legend. Even though Brenda's motive is human, her kills are all based on tales of classic horror. This, in my opinion, almost makes her character become a supernatural being in the eyes of her victims. Brenda makes my list because of Rebecca Gayhart's ability to make a film that followed in the footsteps of Scream stand out. Coming in at number three, we have Victor Crowley. Jit! No, wait. Victor Crowley is played by one of my favorite stunt actors of all time, Kane Hodder. And just like the famous character that Kane played before, poor Victor Crowley just wants to be alone. Anyone that ends up in his Louisiana swamp is sure to never return. Mardi Gras, anyone? Now guys, one and two were really hard for me. They could go either way, so this is what I have. Coming in at number two, we have Mick Taylor from Wolf Creek. How about a trip to the Outback? Are you sure you don't want to run into a cold-blooded killer that knows the land and wants you dead? Because that's what you get when you watch Wolf Creek. Mick Taylor is a man with issues that go way beyond what's shown in part one. But don't worry guys, part two hands you everything you wanted to see in part one and didn't want to see. Trust me. Mick is about as visceral as you can get without going in the way of a creature feature. Yeah, do you have the stomach to check him out? Coming in at number one, we have John Ryder. The hit of 2007. Who wants to go on a road trip? Anybody? I would probably think twice about that guy after watching this remake of the original 1986 film. Sean Bean is almost perfect as John Ryder, a killer with no conscience. No masks are needed for John, because he wants you to see his face. Ryder is a classic killer that plain and simple just likes to kill, but also in a way likes a challenge. What's more terrifying than that? Before I go, Lee, I just want to thank you one more time. <laughs> if you like what you saw on my top five, you can come over to the Zach vs. Blu-ray Mountain YouTube channel. I have a whole bunch of videos, movie reviews, Blu-ray quests, and Blu-ray updates. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can also find me at Letterboxd right here. Back to you, Lee. Okay, thank you, Zach. Those were some excellent selections. Now let's find out what my top underrated slashers are. Or let me just say slasher killers, because I might like slasher movies better than some of these actual movies, but I like the killers in these movies. You get the idea. Anyway, I'm going to start off with a couple of honorable mentions. We're going to run through these real quick. Uh, first one's going to be It Follows. Some people might say that It Follows is not a slasher, but if you define a slasher as somebody who stalks a victim to kill them multiple times, 
it follows classifies. And I give this an honorable mention because it is an interesting way to look at the slasher genre. It's an interesting premise. It's an interesting way to kill people because it could be different people. Next on my list is the killers from The Strangers. I don't know all their names, but I know one of them's name is Dollface. And the reason I picked these as an honorable mention is because they're so unique. The Strangers is really based on tension more than it is um, straight up kills and blood. I mean, kills and blood are in there, but it doesn't happen until later. Really, it is perfect at keeping you on edge pretty much through all the movie. And every time I hear a loud door knock, I think of The Strangers. That's a testament to how cool of a movie this is. And the killers are really creepy. Okay, my last honorable mention is the remake of Maniac starring Elijah Wood. The character's name is Frank. Frank is a really interesting slasher because you see the whole movie through his eyes. You really don't see Elijah Wood's face that much in the movie until he looks in a mirror. And that's an interesting way to tell a story of a slasher because it's a great way to look inside his mind and see what he's going through. And he's really crazy, he's really psychotic. Elijah Wood does a fantastic job uh, in this movie. Okay, now here we go. This is my top five. Uh, number five is gonna have a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, it's gonna be Sleepaway Camp, and I'm gonna give you a countdown, so that way, if you haven't seen the movie, I would probably skip ahead, or if you don't care, just go ahead and watch it. But anyway, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, Angela from Sleepaway Camp. Sleepaway Camp is really interesting for a couple of reasons. First off, it's got one of the most controversial endings of any slasher movie ever. It's still to this day talked about, laughed about. You, know, you are in awe of the ending of this movie. And not just because Angela is a boy, but the way they show her, it looks like a 30 year old man. You know, and I'm not gonna pop a screenshot up here for you because I might get in trouble, but yeah, that's, <laughs> it's just an interesting movie. And I also like how in the second and third movies, they kind of changed her character a bit. It was more of a fun type slasher movie. It's a popcorn slasher movie, not to be taken seriously. And really it's kind of one of the first comedy horror slasher movies. Okay, next up is the original My Bloody Valentine. I'm not even gonna give you the killer's name in this movie because really it's about the look of the killer. You know, he's wearing that gas mask and there might have been a couple movies that actually had a gas mask killer. I'm not sure, but I know My Bloody Valentine is the most famous. But like I said, the big reason I put him on my list is because he's an interesting character to look at. This is also kind of a blue collar slasher movie. And it's set in, you know, a working class group working in the mines. And a lot of people can relate to this, this slasher. And it's a love triangle too, which is kind of cool. My number three is from the movie High Tension. Again, spoiler, five, four, three, two, one, okay. It is Marie. What's cool about this movie is that huge twist. Throughout the whole movie, you got this hillbilly guy that doesn't really say that much, and he is just brutal. There's nothing funny about High Tension at all. And the movie itself is great without the twist ending. But then the twist ending is just the ultimate icing on the cake. That she was actually the killer all along, and she was obsessed with her college friend. But High Tension is a foreign film. It's a great slasher movie though. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Number two is Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. How could he not be on the list? Because he is one of the most interesting killers ever. He is completely psychotic, completely crazy. And the movie is just hilarious and horrific. It manages to balance those two aspects perfectly. And I will never look at Huey Lewis and Phil Collins the same after American Psycho. And now, the number one for me is Billy from Black Christmas. Black Christmas is one of my favorite movies of all time, not just one of my favorite horror movies. And what's funny is I didn't see Black Christmas until a few years ago. And it had that much of an impact on me because of Billy, because of the way Bob Clark handled this character. You never see Billy throughout the whole movie. And the reason he's such a great killer is because he is in the house the whole time he is completely insane, and you'll know that when you hear the phone calls in this movie. And lastly, the, the ending is kind of ambiguous. I mean, Bob Clark has spelled out the ending for us, but if you didn't know that, then you would be questioning things when you see the end of this movie, because they don't spell out anything for you, and I think that is a testament of a great slasher movie. And it's cool that Black Christmas, for years and years and years, was just unheard of, forgotten, and then 
you know, in the late 90s, it finally um, got its up and comings. And now it's considered one of the greater slasher movies out there, one of the greater horror movies. So anyway, guys, that is my list of most underrated slasher killers. What are your favorites? I'm sure I forgot some. And keep in mind, I haven't seen every slasher movie. I know some of you think I have, but I haven't. So anyway, guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Zach versus the Blu-ray Mountain. Had so much fun doing this. Please go down and click on his channel. Give him a sub. And thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. And drum dumb out. Thank you.